All right, so next topic is XOP and MTOM. So here we are going to learn what XOP MTOM is all about, and uh, we are going to compare SOAP with attachment against the XOP MTOM and uh, why XOP and MTOM actually provides a standardized and uh, more optimized way of actually dealing with uh, the uh, uh, SOAP with attachment, uh, actually compared to other schemes. Okay, so what is and why SOAP, uh, I'm sorry, the XOP and MTOM. So the, um, when you are sending binary data, like a JPG file, uh, you have uh, two options, okay, before XOP and MTOM. Okay. The option number one is you are going to embed uh, base64 encoded uh, of binary data, meaning you are going to uh, convert the binary data into base64 base uh, the ASCII code, okay, uh, and that included as part of the uh, uh, the document, uh, part of the data, <coughs> part of the XML. Excuse me. And uh, option number two is using SOAP with attachment. So in this case, you are going to make a reference from the SOAP to the attachment. <coughs> now, uh, either of these option has an issue. The first, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the base 64 encoding, the issues of using base 64 encoding is it will increase the size of the data because you are just converting binary data into ASCII data, uh, which is going to increase maybe about 30 or 40 percent. Okay? And uh, it does include the performance of overhead because you have to do uh, encoding and decoding. So when you're sending the data, you have to encode into base64. And uh, when the receiver receives the data, then it has to be uh, reconvert back to uh, binary data from base64 encoded data. So it has a problem of the size and overhead. Now, the problem of using SOAP attachment uh, doesn't have the problem of base64. But data is external to the document, and it is not part of the message info set. What it means is that inside your SOAP message, uh, it doesn't actually, it doesn't use a standard way of actually referencing the attachment. So you know your XML parser doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, well, actually, XML parser knows what to do with it, but the actual the uh, SOAP, uh, uh, the 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 uh, yeah, let me actually move on to uh, to the uh, next slide because. Uh, uh, it might actually kind of clarify the issues with the uh, usage of uh, SOAP with attachment. So XOP is uh, is an alternative uh, serialization of XML that happens to look like a my multi-part relational message, but the XML document is a root part. What it means is that it's now using XOP standard, XOP standard uh, referencing. So it is actually genuine XML document. So this root part is very similar to XML serialization of the document, except that base64 base encoded data is replaced by reference to uh, one of the mind, mind parts, which, is, which isn't 64 encoded. So it lets you avoid the overhead uh, while actually uh, you know, the, uh, being compliant with the XML, uh, the uh, based format. Okay? So we're going to actually see examples of that using uh, the, uh, the, uh, the actual uh, capture of the uh, message. So MTOM is the description of how XOP is layered on the SOAP HTTP transport. So XOP is basically representing binary data in XML compliant fashion. Okay. So I think the point I was trying to make in this case is that uh, SOAP with attachment, it is actually using a non-XML standard, non-XML kind of a standard way of actually making a reference to binary data. So that's the point I was trying to make. Now by using XOP, XOP now defines a way, standard way of referencing uh, the uh, the binary data. Okay. Uh, so MTOM is actually defining uh, how XOP is going to be used on the top of SOAP HTTP transport. Okay. So typically, when we say MTOM, uh, we are talking about XOP over MTOM. Well, when we say XOP, we are talking about MTOM as well. So people actually use these two kind of interchangeably because, again, SOAP, the, SOAP, the, SOAP over HTTP is a primary transport protocol uh, the, uh, the, uh, using XOP. Okay, so if you compare SOAP with attachment uh, against the MTOM, this is what we are going to see. So here, 
uh, we this is the soap with attachment and it's actually this source is actually non XML no none I would say that's the soap standard okay so I should ask non soap standard rather than the uh, the non XML standard so this is the reference here okay uh, now using XOP now you're going to actually use uh, XOP standard and this is actually well understood okay so uh, we oops sorry As far as the data is concerned, this is exactly the same kind of a binary data. So there is nothing to be, in fact, actually you know changed, uh, except that uh, it's actually using uh, the standard XOP include element to to make a point pointer uh, to make a reference to the binary data. All right, so let's actually see the lab. Mm, M so here in exercise one, uh, we are going to receive a binary da binary data in base sixty four encoded format and uh, using data handler class in Java. And uh, exercise two, we are going to use the same binary data. This time, we are going to use M -tum. And uh, the uh, the uh, exercise three is we are going to send and receive images using MTOM. And uh, last exercise four is we are going to use WSIT WSIT configuration to enable MTOM. Okay. So in this exercise, uh, when you run base sixty four server and client, so let me actually run these things. Okay, so we want to run WS Monitor. So let me just WS Monitor. Okay, so I'm running WS Monitor. And uh, we are going to build and run uh, Base64 uh, server and uh, the uh, and client application. And uh, later on, we're going to just start it. Okay, so Base64 server, run the application. So it'll probably, yeah, so here, uh, let me see whether we have to, uh, not this one, okay. So here we are going to run it, and uh, we are going to get the file. Now you specify the, uh, the uh, index of the file, so we are going to say uh, get file number one, and get file. And uh, this is what you get. Okay, uh, so you know basically uh, what we get back is um, the uh, the uh, you can see it returns the file uh, in base 64 encoded scheme. So that's what we are going to see right here. Okay, all right. And uh, then if you take a look at the waste of document, uh, the uh, um, uh, yeah, we have attached service port binding policy, which is actually used uh, in the binding right here. Okay, and uh, if you take a look at the XML, uh, we are actually using uh, the uh, base sixty four binary type. Okay, uh, so that's how it's actually using uh, the uh, the base sixty four encoding. Okay, and uh, if you take a look at if you open the uh, 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 if you run the uh, binary code, I mean the uh, client code, and uh, it will just display, uh, you know, some like this. Okay, all right. So if you observe this one again, this is what you saw, right? Okay, um, yeah. So that's what you're going to see. Uh, soap. Uh, basically, base 64 is being sent back and forth. Okay. 
Okay. So the server-side code, uh, we are basically reading uh, the JPG file and uh, we are using data handler which understand you know how to handle this uh, JPG file as a MIME type okay so uh, the uh, usage of data usage of the data handler class uh, is actually a uh, data handler class is actually provided Java email package a long time ago to handle this uh, multi uh, and the, uh, to handle the MIME type okay uh, client code is nothing that much different, so you're just trying to get the file and then you know try to display the results. So I mean, because it's JPG file, that's the reason you're actually seeing some kind of uh, you know the uh, uh, characters like this. Okay, so that is actually usage of uh, the uh, the uh, base 64. Okay, uh, exercise two, we are going to actually do the same thing. We are using data handler class, and but this time we are going to use mtom. So let's actually try to use uh, the uh, mtom. So mtom server, uh, uh, so the one that we are going to use the mtom server and mtom client. <coughs> okay, so again, I think uh, we are going to actually do the same thing. We are going to uh, and we're going to see the WSDL document first, and uh, and basically you can see uh, we are using uh, WSP policy, and uh, we are using what is called the optimized MIME serialization. This is basically indicating MTOM. You know we are basically using MTOM, okay, and uh, this is actually the same thing. Okay, so you can see uh, policy is here uh, the uh, MTOM policy. And optimize MIME serialization as a sub element. And uh, now, if you can test the service with the click one, uh, now what we get back is uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, um, yeah, this is actually. Oh yeah, so this is yeah. So you can see the data is still being transported in line in base 64 encoded format. This is not what we expected, right? The reason is the in order to enable mtom, the client has to ask for it too. Okay, so in this case, a JAXRS test client did not ask for the mtom, so that's the reason the server is still actually send back this code. Okay, so I was kind of for a moment, ah, what is going on? <laughs> okay, so if you actually run the uh, uh, mtom client, so let's actually run that guy. So we will say one, and uh, it's still sending in base 64. Okay, so that's not what we expected, and the reason is because client has to ask for it. Okay, uh, so uh, the uh, um, uh, if you actually you know the uh, so we have to actually rebuild the client. Okay, because because the testing is not going to you know the uh, uh, rebuild. Uh, the client, so we, we have to actually rebuild this. In this case, if I just call the mtom, uh, it's going to actually start from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to actually run it. All right, so now if you actually capture the traffic, this is the case. Okay, now you can see, uh, you know, the uh, this is a request, and here uh, is actually using uh, mtom uh, the reference. So here uh, inside, I'm going to actually use the uh, documentation here. Okay, so here uh, the uh, the uh, it's using uh, XOP include. Okay, and the content type is XOP XML, and uh, then it actually make a reference to uh, to this guy. Okay. Uh, so this XOP is understood as a standard, okay, and uh, the uh, and then uh, in the case of the code, you know, basically the way that you want to use the mtom uh, is basically using mtom annotation, okay. So that's the only difference between exercise one and two, okay. And client code, uh, again, you have to actually specify mtom feature. So this is something that. Uh, you know the uh, that has to be actually set on the uh, um, the uh, on the client level, okay. 
And uh, exercise three, now here we are going to actually send uh, images using MTOM. So uh, here we are going to actually do the same thing and you can see uh, the same, uh, the uh, optimized serialization with MTOM policy right here. I should actually emphasize this one as well, uh, is actually used. And uh, schema location is, ex yes, schema location here. Uh, the Okay, uh, um, so here, basic C4 binary, and uh, when you actually run the client, we actually get back. And uh, let's see, when we actually run the application, and if you capture uh, the, uh, yeah, it's actually making a reference. So if you actually take a look at this, it's using XOP include. Okay. And uh, server side again usage of MTOM. Okay, client. We still have to actually set the MTOM feature as part of the port object. Okay. Uh, now the exercise four is uh, we are going to actually build and run Hello Web Service uh, using MTOM. So here, uh, you know, basically we are going to uh, uh, the uh, recreate. We are going to create the uh, uh, so that is actually test the JPG file, and uh, we're going to use the data handler, and uh, you can see, you know you can actually see the content types that that's supposed to be like a JPG file and things like that, and uh, then yeah this is the uh, um, client side code, and uh, now here we can actually configure uh, the uh, hello web service using at web service attributes okay and uh, then set mtom so this is basically setting the mtom okay so if you have java code in this case uh, we uh the uh, in this case uh this is the uh, this is a web service that does not have an mtom right so if you want to actually set this guy with the mtom with the configuration then you can do that as well so you know when you're using at mtom that's actually probably bottom up approach okay uh, the uh, even if you are using bottom-up approach without the mtom, you can still configure, and that configuration is going to be in the WSIT configuration file. Okay, so that the uh, exercise four is for that example is going to use uh, this uh, edit web service attribute, and again it will create a configuration file, WSIT configuration file. So that is basically WSIT my package hello configuration file, and that's where it's going to actually have some kind of uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, mtom binding okay and this will be merged into the final WSDL document when it gets deployed okay um, so and then you run the application then you should actually have mtom WSDL document as expected okay and um, yeah so this is the uh, still basic C4 binary type okay so basically whenever you actually sending binary type then you can actually specify like this okay and uh, then you can recreate the uh, client application. Okay. And now in this case, uh, the the uh, uh, client application still have to uh, deal with uh, the the mtom feature. So that's basically what you get back. Okay. And uh, so this is still multi-part. So mtom messages are still multi-part. That didn't get changed. You know, the only thing that is changed in the soap message. Uh, the uh, the reference is going to be through the uh, 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 the XOP include. Okay, so that's basically the only difference. Okay, all right. So I'm going to give you guys about the uh, 50 minutes, and uh, let's also have 30 minutes uh, lunch time. So we will be back on five minutes after uh, five minutes five minutes after one o'clock.